Welcome back, financial trailblazers. Today, we are going to embark on a journey into an exhilarating world of medical practice ownership. Picture this, the freedom to sculpt your professional destiny, the thrill of an entrepreneurial adventure, the promise of financial independence beckoning on the horizon. But hold on to your stethoscopes because this ride isn't for the faint of heart. We're going to dive headfirst into an intricate dance between clinical expertise and business savvy, uncovering some of those hidden treasures and the treacherous pitfalls of practice ownership. So from laying the financial foundation to navigating regulatory waters, we're going to guide you quickly through an adrenaline-fueled expedition. So whether you're a seasoned practitioner or you dream of an empire building or a fresh-faced resident contemplating your next career move, check out this episode. It's the compass for your uncharted waters of practice ownership. The journey starts now. Welcome to the Physician's Financial Checkup Podcast, where we discuss the financial challenges and opportunities facing medical professionals. In this podcast, we'll discuss a variety of financial topics that are important to physicians, such as retirement planning, investing, and estate planning. We will also interview experts in the financial services industry to get their insights on these topics. If you're a physician or a spouse of a physician, I encourage you to listen to this podcast. We will provide you with the information you need to make sound financial decisions and achieve your financial goals. Here's your host, Brent Bowden, a financial coach and certified financial planning advisor with over 15 years of experience helping medical professionals achieve their financial goals. To learn more about Brent Bowden and his services, visit brentbowden.com. Welcome back to the Physician's Financial Checkup Podcast, where we empower medical professionals to take control of their finances and achieve financial freedom. Today, we're diving into the world of medical practice ownership. We're going to explore the intricate financial considerations that come with the exciting endeavor. And as a medical professional, stepping into ownership offers the opportunity to shape your professional destiny and attain greater financial independence. However, it also presents unique financial challenges and require a strategic approach to ensure success. Today's episode is just going to scratch the surface on a lot of these topics, but I think it's some good info that you'll find very insightful. So first up, financing your medical practice. It's kind of how you lay the foundation. You have to secure the necessary finances that's a crucial first step in owning your own medical practice. Now, there's various options available for financing. Each has its own set of pros and cons. That may be from a traditional bank, from small business administration loans, or specialized practice financing from lenders. It's essential to carefully evaluate the terms, interest rates, and repayment schedules associated with each option. So we're going to dive into those nuances of each financing method just briefly to help you make an informed decision that aligns with your long-term financial goals. So first off, let's talk about traditional banks. They offer stability. They're well-established institutions with a long history of lending. They may offer lower interest rates for qualified buyers. However, they typically have a very stringent eligibility criteria that may require a really high credit score or substantial collateral and oftentimes a significant down payment. Their application processes can be a little lengthy and bureaucratic, which may lead to delays in funding. So make sure that if that's the method you choose, you want to start looking a little earlier. Now, SBA loans are backed by the federal government, so it makes them more accessible for small business owners, including medical practices, and often they require lower down payments. However, they often have longer repayment terms, which may or may not be a good thing for you. Now, the application process for SBA loans can be pretty complex, can be time-consuming, and as a borrower, you must meet specific eligibility criteria to navigate the government regulations. Additionally, SBA loans may have higher fees and interest rates compared to a traditional bank. So something to be aware of and compare your options. Lastly, let's talk about specialty lenders. Specialty lenders such as like a healthcare financing companies or medical practice lenders specialize in financing healthcare professionals for their needs, Uh, whether that's buying into a practice, uh, starting your own practice, and a number of other financial specialties. They offer tailored loans often. They're designed for medical practices. So they can have some really great features, uh, such as deferred payments or interest-only periods. However, they often are going to charge a higher interest rate and fees compared to a traditional loan or even an SBA loan. 
And so you have to be really careful about the terms and conditions of those specialty loans. Make sure they're going to align with your financial goals. That can make a huge difference in which lender you choose. So let's go over a couple of key uh, points in that discussion, just to make sure that you know the, the context of each of those. So interest rates, obviously you can compare interest rates that are offered by a number of different lenders to determine the most cost-effective long-term financing option. Your repayment terms is the length of the loan and the frequency of payments that you have to make. So make sure that those line up with your practice's expected cash flow and, and financial projections. Collateral requirements is something that you, you may get often asked about. And a, certain lenders are going to require additional collateral to secure that loan and to uh, assess your ability to meet their requirements to get it. And so knowing what collateral you may have and what you're willing to, to offer may be very important. And then flexibility uh, in some loaning financing options may include uh, customizing the loan terms or additional funding as your practice continues to grow. So knowing those key considerations within financing is a great place to start on your journey to owning your own medical practice. Now, not only do you have to run a medical practice, but you also have to know some business management. So the art of practice leadership in medical ownership often extends beyond just your clinical clinical expertise. So you're going to have to have some business acumen and some effective management skills. So developing a comprehensive business plan is paramount in outlining your practice's vision, mission, target market, and financial projections are all important. Let's explore a couple of those key components of a small, successful business plan, discuss the strategies for implementing sound business practices, including efficient operations, effective marketing strategies, and a robust financial management system. Your business plan is going to act as your roadmap for that medical practice, outlining all of those key components. There's some specific things that oftentimes you're going to want to include in there. Let's go over those right now. So an executive summary is just the beginning section of your business plan. It really gives you an overview of the practice, summarizes your objective, your target market, some competitive advantages you may have, and financial projections. It's going to serve as that snapshot of this entire business plan. Capture your reader's attention so they know what you're going to be offering. The practice description next is really going to describe that medical practice in detail. It's going to include the legal structure, where you're probably located, what facilities you'll have, what services you're going to offer, and the target patient demographics. Each one of those is ex explains uh, exactly how it's going to set your practice apart from your competitors and highlight any unique selling propositions for your medical practice. Now, always expected within a business plan is some market analysis. And so conducting your market analysis through the healthcare lens of the market in your area is going to include demographics. It's also going to include some patient needs, maybe some competitor analysis, uh, what are the market trends, and it's going to op help you identify opportunities for growth in areas where your practice might be able to capitalize on market demand that's not being met in your area. The next section of your business plan is going to include the marketing and sales strategy. And yes, even as a medical professional, you got to market yourself. So outlining your market and sales strategy to attract and retain those patients uh, can include some digital marketing efforts. You may have community outreach programs, uh, some referral partnerships with other healthcare providers, uh, and maybe some patient retention initiatives. So all of those different marketing strategies, maybe some unique ones that you have on the docket, uh, need to be outlined in your business plan. You're also going to need an operations plan. How do you operate your practice on a day-to-day -day basis? So that includes staffing requirements, workflow processes, scheduling protocols, uh, technology infrastructure, and key operational challenges and how they may be addressed. So those may be kind of a how-to walking through issues that you expect to have come up and, and how you want those addressed so that your entire team is on the same page. Talked a little bit about financial projections, but a, a more detailed uh, projection is of your practice, including kind of revenue forecasts, expense budgets, cash flow projections, and even when your break-even analysis uh, shows for your business, 
And this section really helps to illustrate your financial viability and profitability of your practice over time. Now, a lot of banks love seeing this section. Obviously, they're going to dig into it a little bit, understand when that break-even analysis is, when can you really start to afford to, to pay us back? Risk management is also another aspect of your business plan. Identifying potential uh, risks and challenges for your practice's success, including regulatory compliance issues, uh, potential staffing shortages, changes in healthcare reimbursement policies, and having contingency plans uh, to address those challenges proactively. And then we're also going to have an implementation plan. So outlining the steps that are required to execute your business plan successfully, including timelines, milestones, uh, who's the responsible parties for each of those, and then what resources are allocated to it. When you can help establish clear goals and metrics for measuring your progress and adjusting those strategies as needed, you're going to be able to implement your medical practice plan even better than your competitor down the street. So, Kind of as a, as a quick wrap up of that business planning section, we really want to make sure that your policies and procedures are super clear. You've got all your staff members trained on those and regularly update them to, to reflect any changes in both regulation uh, or things you find out about best practices. You probably want to build in investing in technology. Uh, obviously, that's a big idea right now to be able to streamline your practice operations, improve efficiency, and with AI coming on board. Are there things you're going to need to invest in uh, that can help take care of some of the, the menial day-to-day -day things in the background um, that are going to help automate your business and practice to a much higher level? Some other things you may want to focus on is what's the patient experience? How do you want patient satisfaction to be uh, provided by your staff so that everybody has an exceptional customer service, personalized care, and convenient access to you? And so implementing those patient-friendly policies can be a huge, huge bonus to your practice. You're going to obviously want to monitor some KPIs. So what are the key performance indicators um, over time? Using that data is going to help you improve the business and practice overall. As long as you're continually improving some of those processes until you get them right, uh, your business will likely thrive in, in helping to encourage staff members to be a part of that. Providing feedback and suggestions can help you also streamline operations from the front office to the back office and hopefully enhance the patient care while you're at it. And then you're going to want to make sure you stay uh, compliant. So obviously staying up to date with healthcare regulations uh, is a, a big part of the medical industry. We want to make sure that we're staying on top of all of those. So who's taking ownership of that in your practice? Who's going to be the one to make sure that staff is trained properly and adheres to all of those? regulatory standards. So now that we've got a business plan in place, have some ideas over your financing, let's move on to how are you going to optimize your profitability? Taking a strategic approach, approach to your medical practice ownership really can help maximize revenue and minimize your expenses over time. And so talking about your fee structure, taking into account your patient demographics, potential insurance coverages, and market competitiveness Let's talk about a couple of negotiating uh, tactics to build into your profitability for your business and how to continually strategize to make it even more profitable. So first of all, we want to conduct a cost analysis. What practice costs in identifying areas do you have that expenses could be potentially reduced or optimized? So this may be overhead costs, could be staffing expenses, supply costs maybe just operational inefficiencies. Whatever those are, knowing what everything costs to provide allows you to effectively pass that expense on. Second is negotiating favorable contracts. With suppliers, vendors, leveraging potential purchasing power to negotiate those terms and discounts and pricing arrangements can really help you lower your costs pretty impactfully. And so knowing what opportunities for volume discounts or potentially early payment discounts, um, and long-term contracts can all add to the profitability of your business. You can also focus on value-based care. So what's going to give the best patient outcome and satisfaction while still reducing potential costs? So you may be able to collaborate with some of those suppliers and vendors 
who share a commitment to delivering that high quality of care and are willing to work with you to achieve a cost-effective solution for both of you. We also talked a little bit about leveraging technology. In leveraging technology, you can streamline your practice operations, potentially improve your efficiency, and reduce costs. And so by doing those, whether it's implementing better health record systems, uh, maybe it's telemedicine platforms, you know, there's a number of things you can help to automate, which can improve both the communication and the patient engagement by using technology and obviously the rapidly changing technologies um, may be able to, to help bring down some costs there as well. So continue to monitor those, those KPIs uh, and stay committed to quality care. When you're doing those throughout your practice, you're going to be able to help optimize profitability. But taking a strategic approach to it, you're going to know exactly what small changes have made huge impacts on the profitability of the business. As you're starting a business, one of the other things that obviously we have to, to pay attention to is the complex regulatory environment. That includes compliance with Medicare or Medicaid if you're offering that, state-specific regulations, uh, and staying informed about the changes and applicable laws and standards is key and essential. So let's look at a couple of things quickly that we want to make sure uh, from a legal and compliance standpoint that we're making sure our business is staying compliant. First of all, licensing and credentialing. Uh, ensuring that you and your staff members all are appropriately licensed, have the credentials you need to practice medicine in your state, whether that's a state medical license, DEA registrations for prescribing controlled medications, or any number of certifications that are required. Having all of those up to date, all the CE done and, and on uh, par is going to be obviously huge to having your practice stay on the right side of the compliance. Second is just familiarizing yourself with both federal, state, and local regulations that govern medical practices. So HIPAA laws, billing, coding, CMS regulations, fraud and abuse laws, telemedicine, uh, all the different regulatory changes that could potentially impact your practice. Obviously, on a lot of these, we uh, advocate working with a firm that does a lot of this compliance and, and helps you along. It's just so much to keep up with otherwise. Um, and so knowing when you should bring in somebody to help is a, is a great place. If you plan to treat Medicare and Medicaid patients, obviously those have some additional requirements and programs through government health care uh, that you want to make sure you're staying involved with. You probably already know a little bit about billing and coding, but digging deep into uh, the healthcare coding systems can really help to provide the accurate codes and billing for the services that you're going to provide. And so by in implementing internal controls, and regular audits of those systems to prevent any billing errors, uh, fraud and abuse, and really help your practice both stay compliant, but also optimize uh, potential profitability. We also want to look at the quality reporting and value-based care. So Medicare, if you're working in that space, has the Medicare Quality Payment Program um, and a value-based care. Knowing what incentive providers um, to, to offer that high quality cost effective care and understanding what those reporting requirements are uh, can help you remain relevant and especially uh, get more profitability out of your practice. Employment laws is another thing that a lot of people don't think about from a medical practice standpoint, but you obviously are becoming a business owner. So as you do that, understanding what your local employment laws are, uh, what the regulations governing both hiring and management of your staff, including the wages and hours laws, uh, any anti-discrimination, workplace safety, and make sure that you have or get developed a employee handbook that covers those policies and procedures that need to comply with the relevant employee laws to promote a safe and inclusive work environment. As a business owner, you're also going to have some facility uh, regulations that you have to operate with. So depending upon the type of practice you have, you have to ensure compliance with building codes, zoning regulations, facility licensing requirements, um, and make sure that you have a, a safe and sanitary environment for your patients, your staff, and to adhere to any infection control protocols uh, to prevent the spread of infectious diseases. 
Furthermore, you also have to look at your professional liability insurance. So making sure that you have malpractice insurance that protects you uh, and yourself against claims of medical negligence or malpractice. Understanding what those coverage limits are, any exclusions and requirements of your insurance policy to, to make sure that they meet the legal and contractual obligations for your practice. So lots of other business involved things uh, when you start your own practice. So knowing exactly what those are and making sure you stay compliant is a huge, huge part of owning your own business. So obviously, the last part is uh, that I wanted to go over is just succession planning. We've talked about this uh, on a couple episodes from a family wealth perspective, uh, I believe on episode 36. But succession planning in your business practice is another key thing to make sure you put in place that helps ensure the continuity and the long-term success of your medical practice. So I want to discuss a couple of key components real briefly here. Obviously, if this is something that you're starting your own practice, just having this in place so that you know how ownership is going to transfer, what key employees you need to include, and what uh, patient retention strategies are built in, is going to help you to provide a little bit of reassurance for your staff that the business is going to keep going, even if you're not the one there working with it. So real quickly, we want to identify those succession goals and objectives. So defining those on your succession plan can ensure continuity of that patient care and practice reputation. You also want to have a leadership transition strategy. So determining how the leadership roles of your practice are going to be, whether that's key positions like a practice owner or a medical director, maybe administrative leadership, and starting to develop them over time is going to make a future transition even better and more smooth as you develop and train them. You may want to include some sort of ownership transfer plan. So is there a way for key people to get ownership over time? Could be great, but you want to specify what those terms and conditions are of ownership transfer. What are the valuation methods, financing methods, and any legal requirements you might need? You may also want to include some key employees. They may not necessarily be doctors, but allowing them to be involved in that succession by providing training, mentorship, and development opportunities may allow you to groom somebody such as a clinical management or practice administration that you might not have thought about before. You also want to make sure that you develop a patient retention strategy, maintaining the continuity of care, whether you get sick, hurt, or can't work during a succession opportunity. Uh, is certainly something that you want to make sure that is communicated openly and transparently with both your patients and the leadership staff should that arise. Obviously, there's a number of legal and financial uh, considerations that you want to make sure are built into that succession plan. Those include maybe regulatory compliance, tax implications, uh, contractual agreements, maybe there's some risk management strategies. And so working with a, a legal or financial advisor to address a lot of those it's going to be helpful to include in your succession plan. And then contingency plans. So something happens uh, with a sudden illness or a death. We want to make sure that you have things to mitigate and ensure business continuity with that plan. A couple extra things I always like to, to add in. Obviously, you want to have a communication plan. Should anything happen, doesn't mean that every employee needs to know all about your succession plan. But key stakeholders, uh, whether that's employees, patients, vendors, Referral partners uh, need to know a little bit about how your succession is planning. Uh, that way, they feel comfortable in understanding exactly what's going to happen should something happen to you. Then you want to make sure all this is documented and you have some sort of regular reviews. So that could be at times of changes in practice ownership, it could be times of leadership change or market conditions that require it. Whatever those might be, you want to make sure all this is done in writing. And then finally, you want to continually monitor and implement any need for changes. There may be adjustments uh, over time as the business grows or you open multiple locations. Uh, whatever that timeline might be for you, you want to make sure that this is at least regularly checked to make sure your implementation strategy is still effective. So that is a lot of information that we've covered in less than 25 minutes about business practice ownership, and some of those foundational things that you need to set yourself on the financial reward and the challenges that are required 
when you own your own business and especially that of a medical practice. So when you carefully consider all the financial implications, acquiring some necessary business skills, and maybe seeking some expert advice, you can really navigate the complexities of practice ownership and achieve the financial goals that you want. But make sure that you take small steps, stay consistent with them, and seek professional help when you need. With that dedication and the right strategies, you can certainly transform your medical practice into a thriving and financial rewarding endeavor. So thanks for tuning in today to this episode of the Physician Financial Checkup Podcast. Stay tuned. Future episodes for valuable insights and tips to help you achieve your financial success as a medical professional. Subscribe and share with your friends, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. If you're feeling overwhelmed by your finances, know that you're not alone. Medical professionals face unique challenges when it comes to their financial well-being. I'm Brent Bowden, a certified financial planner with over 15 years of experience helping medical professionals achieve financial freedom. In my new book, The Physician's Financial Checkup, Financial Advice and Education for Medical Professionals, I share some proven strategies and expert insights to help you reduce your debt, manage your budget effectively, invest for long-term financial security, plan for comfortable and safe and secure retirement, navigate the complexities of medical practice ownership, estate planning, and more. So if you're a medical professional and want to be more confident about your finances, take control of your financial future and achieve peace of mind, then get your copy of the Physician's Financial Checkup today, available in paperback, ebook, and now even on audiobook. You can visit our website or your favorite bookstore to learn more. Don't wait. Start your journey to financial freedom today. Thank you for listening to the Physician Financial Checkup Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on your favorite platform and leave a review. You can also find more information on brentbowden.com. The information contained in this podcast is for educational purposes only and should not be construed as financial advice. The opinions expressed are solely those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the views of any other individual or organization. You should carefully consider your investment objectives, risk tolerance, and time horizon before making any investment decisions. If you are seeking financial advice, you should consult with a qualified financial advisor who can assess your individual circumstances and needs.